Many people have a very morbid curiosity with death. It's only human nature to wonder what happens after we die. After all, death is a part, a very important part, of the circle of life. Now, for many religions, there are certain rites that happen at death. The Catholic faith of Christianity required that the body be buried. Of course, there's the little problem of space. What do you do with all these bodies? And one major European city in particular had quite an issue on their hands when it came to a bunch of bodies. This little problem has opened up a world for explorers trying to find the truth behind our world today. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. There's also, again, a link to our Patreon if you want to help support this channel. Also, don't forget, one of our fellow community members has written a really awesome book on multiverse or parallel universes. I have read a part of it and he is an incredible writer. He is looking for a literary agent or a publishing house that can help him out. So if you look down in the description box below, you can see a snippet of his book as well as his email address if you wanna reach out to him and help him out. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and I'm super excited about this story because today we are going to be talking about the legends, the myth, the folklore, and the history of the Paris catacombs. France is one of my favorite cities. I know that's cliche to say, but I love Paris. I've always loved Paris. I remember when I was in high school, I was standing on top of the top part of the Eiffel Tower and I seriously had this thought that I was just gonna throw my passport down and get rid of it so that I would not have to come back. I could just stay in France because I loved Paris so much. However, with that being said, my French is terrible. I did study French in school. However, there's not many French speaking people in my neck of the woods, so everything I learned at school wasn't practiced outside of school. In my opinion, the French language is one of the most beautiful Western languages, but it's also one of the hardest for those of us who are obviously not native French speakers. So I do ask that you will forgive me in this story if I mispronounce some of the names that we're gonna talk about today. I am trying, it's no disrespect, but I am a native English speaker. So the Paris catacombs extend about 200 miles under the city of Paris, France. They're about 100 feet under the city of Paris, France. The catacombs started off as quarry tunnels where they would go and get limestone. In fact, Notre Dame is made from the limestone underneath in the tunnels as well as the Louvre. To this day, the Paris catacombs hold about 6 million bodies. Now remember, I did say it was about 200 miles worth of tunnels with bodies. However, only a very small section of the catacombs are available to the public. This is the Donfer Rouchou part of the ossuary. Now, the rest of the catacombs is where we get a lot of our folklore and legend. In fact, there are people who are called cataphiles that devote a lot of their free time to exploring the parts of the tunnels that are technically illegal for the general public. So how did these tunnels, these quarries become 
a massive burial plot. Well, you see, as I said in the opening, for a lot of Western, the Western world's modern history, when Christians, when Catholic Christians died, there was a rite of passage around their death. They couldn't be cremated. They had to be buried in the land owned by a church. So hollowed land, blessed land. We talked about this in our Savannah series as well. Well, of course, over time, as more and more and more people die, because that's what people do, there was an over abundance of bodies and apparently there's legends around the churches being so crammed with dead bodies that this stench was all around Paris. As you can imagine this was obviously not the most sanitary of times. But things got really bad and really overwhelming around 1774. St. Innocent or the Holy Innocent Cemetery in Paris started to crack. Again, there were so many bodies coming in. We're also coming upon the French Revolution where people were getting killed a lot. But all of a sudden, there was an urgent need to figure something out on May 31st of 1780. There had been a lot of rain around this time and of course rain makes the ground wet. Now we know that man versus nature, nature always wins and this day nature was a force to be reckoned with. You see because of the rain and the weakening of the ground one of the walls in the cemetery mausoleum broke and all of a sudden like some big zombie apocalypse bodies started to roll out on the street now i laugh at this because thinking about that now in 2020 is quite humorous but of course for them back in those days this was a total disaster i mean bodies everywhere rats everywhere again the stench of these dead bodies not to mention the diseases that dead bodies can carry the the french government all of a sudden had a major major problem on their hands so it was the then king of france louis the 16th that decided that the tunnels the quarries would act as catacombs for all of these dead bodies now louis the 16th only had about 13 years himself left to live his wife marie antoinette is the one that famously said during the french revolution when they didn't have bread will then let them eat a cake and both louis the 16th and marie antoinette both were beheaded during the french revolution now it is said that they are the start of the pesor family which we've talked about briefly on this channel as being the head of the Illuminati today. It appears that one of their children survived and went on to take on the name Pesor, which in my opinion, the Paris catacombs are another area, just like the Church of Bones in the Czech Republic, that possibly have some satanic rituals, which we'll get to soon. But back to the creation of the catacombs. After the wall collapsed in 1780 and Louis the 16th ordained the tunnels to now be a catacombs for the next six years, priests in the dead of night would pile bodies up into wagons. They covered the wagons with a black cloth as to try not to traumatize the people of France too much. Now they would walk these wagons down to the entrance of the catacombs, chanting and praying to keep the dead peaceful. Now the entrance to the Paris catacombs is called the Berrière d'Enfer. This translates to the gates of hell. Now legend has it that it got this name because this was the rough area of town. You see in 1787 two pavilions were built. Now these pavilions were also not only apparently the gates of hell, but they were the entrance to the city of Paris. Now this is pretty logical to me that this might have been a rough area because even though our times change, 
humans typically don't change socially, right? So if you think about our airports today or places where we enter into countries or cities, again, especially an airport, usually those are pretty rough areas. So that makes sense that this back then would have also been a rougher area of town, the entrance into Paris. The, one of the pavilions anyway was said to collect the taxes on goods entering the city. And if any of you are fans of Victor Hugo's Les Miserables, there is a part where he speaks about this area of town in the novel. I've read Les Miserables, the whole whole novel. It's a very, very long, long novel, very good novel. Of course, I love the play, but I read the novel when I was in high school one summer just for shits and giggles because I, I like the story. And I always had this goal that one day I would read it in French. I don't think that's gonna happen though. Well, after the bodies were placed into the tunnels, they were placed there a little haphazardly. You see some of the bodies were 300, 400, 500 years old. So all that was left of them were bones. So some were just kind of tossed. But it was the director of the mines when the tunnels were used as a mine that had some of the bones arranged in an art artsy installation, kind of like our Church of Bones again in the Czech Republic. And this is the area that is open now. So when you go there, Well, this section of the catacombs became open to the public in 1874. Now, again, I say this section of the catacombs because, again, there are over 200 miles worth of tunnels underneath the city. Now, as humor and fate would have it, they have made these other parts of the tunnels illegal for people to enter. However, a lot of buildings in Paris have entrances to these tunnels. One of the most famous entrances to the catacombs is the Opera Grandier. Hope I said that right. You might be familiar with this opera because it is the opera where the phantom of the opera took place. One of the most famous scenes in The Phantom of the Opera shows the Phantom canoeing with Christine in a river underground. This isn't fantasy. In fact, under the opera house, there is like a river in the catacombs. And in fact, it's said today that people who work in the opera house will go into that area of the catacombs to feed the fish that lived down there. I always wanted the phantom to win Christine's heart. Now legend does state that when you're in the catacombs, sometimes you can hear the walls talking to you, especially if you get deep into the tunnels. It just makes sounds that you normally wouldn't expect to hear when you're that far underground. Well, one of the most famous people to get lost in the tunnels and succumb to the tunnels is a man named Philibert. Now, Philibert worked for one of the businesses above the ground. This was during the time of the French Revolution. Well, apparently he went down to try to find some alcohol. I don't know if the business was keeping alcohol in the tunnel or if he got confused and ended up in the catacombs instead. You see, they say Philibert went down there with just one candle. So obviously he was not expecting to be down there for that long. Now, from all I could find about this man, uh, he apparently was from Paris. He was a Parisian born and bred. And when this is your hometown and when you know the ins and outs of an area, yeah, I think you would just light one candle, go down, get what you need and come back up. It seems that Philibert was only gonna be down there in his mind for maybe five minutes, right? 
well, Philibert never came back. And it was 11 years later that they found Philibert's body in the catacombs. It seemed he had gotten disoriented and gotten lost. They were only able to identify him by his key that he had on his body, signifying the business that he worked for. Well, now down in the catacombs today, there is a marker for where he died because you see where he died was where they buried him. However, many people don't buy that story. Many people don't believe that Philibert just got lost. Because you see, many people believe that some people go into the catacombs and see something that they were not supposed to see. You see the rumors of satanic rituals or sacrifices happening in the catacombs started almost when the catacombs became the catacombs. And so many people believe that Philibert was a victim of something evil in the catacombs. In fact, this was so much a believed story that there was this man named Cesari, Cesari, that was charging people to take them into the catacombs so they could meet the devil himself. Uh, part of me thinks that was a con, but you never know. Anyway, this particular gentleman was eventually arrested and jailed in the Bastille where he died in the Bastille. Many people to this day believe that a lot of the satanic practices happen under Boulevard Etagou. In fact, under this boulevard, apparently there is a sign that says Achiheri, Satan, which in English means stand back. Satan seems appropriate because in the catacombs, it also warns people that this is the empire of death and they should stop before entering. In 1896, scandal arose in Paris when some cataphiles were exploring, again, parts of the tunnel that were technically illegal, and they found all these strange animal skulls, like an abundance of animal skulls. Well, they ended up going to get the Parisian police, and they figured out the skulls were the skulls of cats. It appears that above this area of the catacombs was a restaurant in Paris that was famous for its rabbit. Well, apparently there was a well that connected to the tunnels and the chef wasn't using rabbit. Instead, he was using cat. This is why I'm a vegetarian. But in my opinion, the real juicy, the real truth telling behind the use of the catacombs came out in the 1990s in the, and into the 2000s. We know now that there are tunnels under our cities. I mean, that's how a lot of the human trafficking happens, right? That's how they do a lot of the things that these they do. Well, in 2004, the police department in Paris, France was utilizing the tunnels to help train their new officers to be able to move in tight, dark spaces. Well, the officers stumbled upon an area of the catacombs that no one had really adventured into before. In this area, they found an actual movie theater and a restaurant, like a full functioning movie theater and restaurant. Apparently the movies that they were showing were highly illegal movies. If you know what I'm talking about, I don't know if I can say it without YouTube getting mad and blocking this video, but it starts with an S and ends with an UF films. And because of that, I wonder what was being served at this underground restaurant. Did it have to do with human blood or the likes of the Hollydale restaurant in Los Angeles? Well, the Paris police officers were obviously totally shocked by what they found. And 
and they realized that electricity was pumping into this working cinema and restaurant, obviously. So that's how they were going to try to catch who this person was. And they called the electricity company to come down there the next day with them to cut the lines and to figure out who was actually doing this. And when they got down there the next day, the lines had already been cut and there was a note saying, you will never catch us. In my opinion, this was definitely an Illuminati hangout. And given the type of movies that were in the cinema, definitely where they were participating in their satanic ritual abuse or SRA. Now, one of the most fascinating stories for the world that came out of the Paris catacombs is the story of the video footage that was found in the early 2000s. They believe the video was made in the early 1990s. Now, nobody knows what happened to the man who was filming this footage. This is what we do know from the footage that's been provided to us. Most of the catacombs, as I said, are 100 feet under the city of Paris, although his footage seemed to be about 300 feet under the city of Paris. Now, we do know this man was probably an experienced cataphile. It seemed that he had a purpose and a reason for being down there, and it seems that he, for the most part, knew what he was doing and had a mission before everything went haywire. You see, in the footage, you see him seeing rooms of just piled up body parts and bones. And at one point, you see the footage of a skeleton spread eagle on the wall. It's around this time that our mysterious man, our mysterious cataphile, starts to panic. You can hear his breathing change. He starts to run back and forth. It's like he's trying to get out or he's possibly stumbled again upon something that he shouldn't have, like our old friend Philibert. At first, logically, it makes sense because our mysterious man seems to be running towards the light or towards the exit. And of course, the only light that he has is the light on his camera. Well, eventually he drops his camera and he runs directly into the darkness and nobody knows why. Again, nobody's ever found his body. They've only found the video footage. And in the early 2000s on the TV show, Scariest Places on Earth, Francis Freeland provided the footage. He also went back into the catacombs with the film crew to try to figure out what happened. Now, Francis Freeland himself was a cataphile. Many people believe this whole story to be a hoax that Francis Freeland had made it up or the network had made it up. However, I'm not so sure. You see, when researching this story, I found more contemporary footage of Francis Freeland being interviewed. The guy interviewing him asked him if he would take him back down into the catacombs, whereas Francis Freeland responded that he would never set foot again back into the catacombs. He believed that the catacombs were one of the most evil places on this earth. Watching this interview, it's pretty clear that there's some PTSD coming from Francis Freeland. And PTSD, in my opinion, is not something that you can fake. There is legit trauma in his eyes. Was he threatened by the global elite for exposing something happening in those tunnels? I have no idea, but I would not be surprised. I do have to admit though, after studying the catacombs for a while, for a few days to make this video, even though it does seem like there's some sinister stuff going on in the catacombs. Next time I'm in Paris, I do plan on visiting the catacombs. No, I will not be going into the areas that are technically illegal because I do know that there are Satanists in this world and what they do to people is unbearably awful. So I will just stay in the area that's designated to the general public. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you been to the Paris catacombs? Catacombs are so fascinating to me. Maybe it's because I'm not Catholic and we just don't really have stuff like that here in America. I know New Orleans has some, some stuff with their burials, but 
And if you have been to the catacombs, do you think there's something else going on in those catacombs besides just touring dead bodies? Now I will say there is a group of cataphiles that like to rave down there. They have like Halloween parties and they, I don't know, that might be kind of fun. And I think from what I understand, from what I read, I think the fine if you get caught in areas that are not open to the public, it's only like $60 for a ticket. So for a lot of people that 60 bucks is worth it just to experience a rave or to go exploring to try to find some truth about what's going on in the Paris catacombs. But man, I am way too old for a rave. Just the thought of being up past nine o'clock at night makes my skin crawl now. I am just too old for that stuff at this point in my life. But for the youngsters out there, as long as you're being safe and having fun, enjoy your raves in the catacombs. All right, guys, thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music and to Todd Broderick for helping me produce this video. Again, Todd's band is located in the description box below if you want to check out his band. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Thank you.